Hey guys, Lon Measy again, and with Classic WoW on the horizon, I'd like to discuss how feasible it is to play it for free by purchasing WoW tokens by making gold on the BFA side. In case you didn't know, in order to play WoW Classic, all you need to do is to maintain a WoW subscription. And with the WoW tokens you can purchase on the retail version of the game, you can use that to sustain a WoW subscription without having to pay any real money. Now if you already own and play BFA, this is all a lot more accessible to you. But if you're someone who wants to play just mostly Classic WoW once it rolls out, or if you're someone who doesn't own Battle for Razoroth yet, but are looking to buy it and make some gold on it to help you save some money playing Classic WoW, then in this video I'm going to show you how to best go about that, and what I think are some great strategies that'll help you minimize your time in BFA and maximize your time in Classic. Namely, to make the most gold possible on BFA in the shortest amounts of time. By the way, these strategies will require you to own Battle for Razoroth and play it from time to time, so if your intention is to play Classic WoW exclusively, this video is probably not going to be for you. But if you're interested, do stay a while and listen, and without further ado, let's get right into the strategies. So first, in case you have yet to purchase BFA, I'm going to quickly go over the cost of the game. Now, to be able to play the retail version of the game without any discounts, you'll have to purchase Battle for Azeroth for 50 US dollars, and it does not come with a subscription. This does indeed mean that you can play up to the previous expansion, Legion, by just having an active WoW subscription. Although it is advised to invest in Battle for Razoroth to be able to make gold significantly more quickly, and also because the strategies in this video are mostly based around the latest version of the game. If you're just starting out, you'll probably want to actually purchase the World of Warcraft Complete Collection, which is essentially just Battle for Razoroth plus one month of subscription time, because just $10 for an extra month of game time is actually a really good discount. Yes, you'll have to sink $60 to be able to even get started, but you'll not only gain the opportunity to be able to recuperate this amount of money, but also be able to make enough gold to sustain your WoW subscription for months or even years down the line. The break-even point for the 60 bucks you need to spend at the beginning roughly translates to around 5 WoW tokens, which is worth just over $60 of Blizzard balance. But note that even after this, you can continue making gold to convert into Blizzard balance. Now, something else worth pointing out is that WoW sometimes does go on a discount, Although I doubt it's going to happen anytime soon, but do keep an eye out for this, because it could save you an extra $20. Next, another quick tip I need to share with you is that redeeming WoW tokens for Blizzard Balance than buying 6 months of game time is more cost efficient than redeeming game time from tokens directly. This is something that a lot of people overlook, but could save you a lot of gold or money in the long run. And lastly, WoW token prices also differ depending on the region you're playing in, with US servers having the lowest and most accessible prices in general. But even if you intend to play in EU or another region, the strategies in this video will still work for you because the prices of the WoW tokens also tends to reflect the server's economies. Meaning that for instance, even though Europe commands a higher WoW token price than the US, that gap can be somewhat compensated by the fact that items tend to sell for a bit higher on EU servers as well. Next up, I'm going to quickly talk about leveling. If you buy BFA, all you have to do is to level from 110 to 120, because the expansion comes with a free level boost, and it doesn't take very long to hit max level. In terms of what to prioritize to level up, Island Expeditions are probably the quickest and most consistent way to level up. And you can queue up in your faction's capital city. And if I'm not mistaken, there's also a weekly quest that you can do to get even more EXP with this. By the way, before you experienced BFA players say that faction assault are the fastest way to level up, I don't think they're available to accounts that don't have any characters at max level. So unless you're leveling an alt, we can go ahead and rule that out for now. However, there is an exception that seems to be faster than doing island expeditions, and that is time walking, so if it ever happens to be live, make sure to queue up for these instead of island expeditions. And for any of these methods, being in a group will not only improve your queue times, but also likely save you some trouble of running into bad teammates. Lastly, I'll just go through some additional tips for when you're leveling up. First, if you do decide to do any questing, for example to get some flight points, the add-on called Azeroth Autopilot can be very useful to help you speed up that process. Next, you may or may not want to toggle on war mode, because while it gives you more EXP, it also makes you susceptible to ganks. I think generally a good rule of thumb is to keep it on, but if you frequently find your questing hubs full of gankers, then you can consider otherwise. And another thing you can do is to take herbalism and mining while leveling up, to earn a little bit of extra gold, but it's not going to matter too much if you just do a lot of island expeditions and time walking, and getting to max level as fast as possible is just a lot more important. Next up, I'm going to talk about making gold at max level. With the current state of the game, making gold with the latest content will be the fastest way. 
Now before you consider anything else, you'll want to first pick your server. While a lot of variables could factor into this, a good rule of thumb is to go for medium to high pop servers, and especially those with a strong rating scene. You can use the UndermineJournal.com and TradeSkillMaster.com to compare the sales of endgame consumables between various servers. And those that see higher fluctuations of prices, especially before and after a weekly reset, will likely be the best. Next, to get started with any type of crafting, you'll want to pick up both the TradeSkill Master add-on and desktop app. And you'll be able to find both on TradeSkillMaster.com. This is crucial because they'll help you determine how profitable a craft is at any given time. Next, let's get into profession picking. Personally and on my server, enchanting has been really good for me. I've been able to have very consistent profits with it, and I can especially get a lot of sales and very quickly right after a weekly reset. Namely, the patch 8.2 max level ring enchants and weapon enchants are hot sellers, and you can just pick out whatever sells for the most using your TSM add-on. There are also some other notable old world stuff that you can sell, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Another great thing about enchanting is that you can disenchant gear, so whenever there's a world quest for an epic, you can actually knock it out, get the gear and disenchant it for a few hundred extra gold, which you can save towards your enchants. Now for your second profession, I think there are several viable options that you can go with. The first of these and what I use is alchemy. The way to make lots of gold with alchemy in patch 8.2 is quite simple. You basically just have to get the rank 3 which is the highest ranked recipes for your flasks. And even if on TSM it shows that you're crafting for a slight loss, that's typically not true if you have rank 3, because it allows you to frequently proc extra flasks, which over time will easily net you a decent profit. Another good option is jewel crafting, although I think it's not as future proof as alchemy. And what I mean by that is that alchemy has more valuable old world crafts like the transmutes that'll allow you to make some gold even as the end game makes its course. That being said, jewel crafting does have the panther mounts which are very valuable to craft, but in my opinion, jewel crafting is just a little better to have on an alt, and I'll actually get into how you can set that up a little bit later. Now if you want some consistency and fast selling items, although with a little bit less profit potential, you can also consider picking up mining or herbalism. Notice that I haven't talked a lot about the gear crafting professions, and that is indeed because they're just not that good in this patch. And also, don't overlook cooking. It's fairly easy to get into and also can be quite lucrative. Now for some additional tips to get more sales and maximize your profits, first you'll want to constantly check for rank 3 recipe work orders within your faction's Nazjatar base camp. You can also do this by simply accessing your Nazjatar map through your world map. My next tip is to pick up the tools of the trade, which are special items that give you extra output when crafting. If you have enchanting, you definitely want to pick up Ewan's enchanting rod. The ones for alchemy and jewel crafting are also quite decent. They can be obtained through short quest lines and a little bit of dungeon queuing. I also happen to have done a video covering and ranking all the tools of the trade, so if you're interested, you can check it out in the description box below. Next, I just want to emphasize that timing the markets can significantly increase your profits by allowing you to not only purchase materials for cheaper, but also sell things for more expensive. It sounds and it is quite complicated, but here's just one quick easy tip that can help you significantly get more sales of enchants, gems, and consumables. And that is to buy cheaper materials a little bit before a weekly reset, mostly on Mondays, and to sell consumables and item enhancements right after. The reason for the former is that as people wind down their rating for the week, there's going to be less of a demand for most of these crafts, which drives prices down. On the other hand, shortly after a weekly reset, people will be opening their Mythic Plus chests and PvP chests, and thus will be looking for enchants and gems on their gear. And as they start raiding again, especially early on in the weekends, the demand for and prices of consumables will then go up. All in all, this is a simple yet effective strategy that works most of the time, that not only gets you more profits, but also saves you a little bit of time from scanning for cheap materials or even reposting your auctions. Now, since enchanting is my number one profession recommendation, I'm now also going to briefly go through some old world enchants you can craft to supplement your income. First, we have Glorious Stats and Elemental Force which are learned from the Pandaria trainers. Glorious Stats does require level 50 in Pandaria enchanting, but it's fairly easy to obtain with how cheap the materials are and I'll link some profession leveling guides in the description box below. Next we have Enchant Weapon Crusader which is crafted via Vanilla Enchanting. You'll need to get to Vanilla Enchanting level 300 for this, and the recipe can be farmed in about 30 minutes in Tyr's Hand in the Eastern Plaguelands. And lastly we have the Warlords of Draenor Speed Cloak Enchants, 
and the recipes can simply be purchased by crafting another special currency with Warlords of Draenor enchanting, and there's no profession level requirement to craft them. Now, there could be some other enchants that are good depending on the server, but these are the ones that are tried and true and have worked very consistently for myself to this day. And yet another profitable and timeless gold maker that you can craft with enchanting is the Tome of Illusion. And these are essentially tomes that characters can learn to be able to transmog certain enchants onto their weapons. The 8 different recipes are mostly obtained in different ways, with some coming from trainers and others coming from quests and even others coming from reputations, and they're even spread across multiple expansions up to Warlords of Draenor. Some can be a bit more tedious to get, and the mats have sort of varied and take up a lot of space. However, this has been a pretty consistent way to make gold with enchanting that has existed for a while now and will undoubtedly continue to exist into the future. Next, for one more auction house tip, you can actually use the Trade Skill Master website to send you email notifications of specific items of your choosing that are below prices of your choosing. And to show you an example of this, I'm gonna first select my server which is US Kill Jaden and search up the Veiled Crystal which is the epic enchanting material. And the next thing I'm gonna do is simply to scroll down and select my notification options. Besides the prices below or above which you want the system to notify you of, you can also specify the number of items present on the auction house to get notified of. And to receive email notifications, you can simply tick that option right below. If I'm not mistaken, the system updates on the hour. So you could, for example, check on the hour even while you're playing Classic WoW by setting notifications on your phone or just opening up your inbox to see if certain mats are being sold for a discount. You also don't necessarily have to use email notifications because they'll also show up on the TSM homepage once you're logged in. And yet another tip is not just to use it to track crafting mats, but also rare and expensive items that either seldom show up on the auction house or are just very expensive but occasionally could show up as a good deal. Now if you intend to do any sort of farming, besides doing mining or herbalism if you have either of those as a secondary profession, the so-called 2x4 farms are probably one of the most efficient ways to farm gold which is essentially having two separate groups at hyper spawn locations and just tagging and killing each other's mobs. You should be able to easily find a group at max level from the group finder. Now if you're ever short on a few thousand gold for the WoW token or just for anything, you can do some old world raids to get some raw gold. And one of the fastest ways to access these is to queue up through your Warlords of Draenor garrison for some looking for raid difficulty raids. In particular, Archimon, which is the final boss of the Hellfire Citadel, and some of the other encounters of the same raid are very efficient to do, although you can only do them once a week per character, but they each drop a couple hundred of gold plus some epics that you can sell for additional hundreds of gold. In addition, some of the Mists of Pandaria raids can also be good, because they not only give you raw gold, but even pets and also some crafting mats. Now, old raid farming isn't going to get you super rich super quickly, but it is a good way to get some quick raw on-demand gold. If you want more information on this, Ark Valdor actually did a couple of videos covering this topic, which I'll include in the description box below. Another way that you can supplement your gold income with relatively low effort is to knock out certain kills or other things that are extremely efficient for your time, such as teleporting to the Black Temple here and killing the Doomwalker, who always drops some coveted transmog pieces. Doing things like this is very efficient because all you have to do is to teleport to check whether or not he's there before you log out, after which when you log back in, you can just hearthstone back to your original area. There are other rare spawns just like the Doomwalker that you can kill occasionally, and as such, I recommend checking out my other videos on which I cover some really time efficient routines that can help you earn some extra gold. Another thing that you can add to your daily or weekly routine that I also covered in that video is the Warlords of Draenor Garrison. It takes a bit of effort to set up, but once you do, it becomes a fairly passive way for you to earn some extra gold. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and check out my other video that I've linked in the description box below that covers the garrison in a lot of depth. In a similar vein, the Pandaria farm can also be a good way to supplement your income, especially if you station an alt there, because the ore that you can gather from it is still being used in a lot of the mounts that are still being bought and sold on the auction house. And I'll definitely cover those mounts in the next section of the video, but if you're interested in how to set up the farm, I also have another video linked in the description box below. Now before I move on to the next part of the video about setting up alts, I just want to show you one last tip which happens to also work better the more alts you have, and that is obtaining one time per character big ticket items to make gold. I do again have a video on this which I'll link in the description box, and actually there are indeed more of these items that have surfaced along with BFA, which I will do a sequel video on down the line, so stay tuned for that. Finally, for the last segment of this video, I'm going to be covering how to use alts to make more gold. 
And by alts, I mainly just mean a demon hunter because they start at a much higher level than all the other characters that you can create. Which gives you a character almost right off the bat that is capable of handling a significant proportion of the old world content, who is also able to learn most of the recipes required to set up a profitable alt. First, in my opinion, you definitely want to have engineering on your alt, and that is because it has the most access to valuable mounts that can be sold on the auction house. The first one and probably the most accessible that you should go for is the Sky Golem. To get the recipe, you'll have to first get to level 75 Pandaria Engineering, and by the way, I'll link a leveling guide below, and after you hit that level, you can pretty much go anywhere in Pandaria and just kill mobs until the recipe drops. As I'm demonstrating here, it'll typically drop within your first few kills. And what'll actually drop is this journal of a collection of recipes, which includes the Sky Golem, but to craft a mount, you'll have to first craft a Binon Pickup Yard's Peculiar Energy Source, which takes 10 Ghost Iron Bars to craft. And it takes 30 of these energy sources to make one Sky Golem. And the thing is, you can only make one per day, which means that each character can only craft one golem every 30 days. And this limitation typically makes it so that you'll see less competition on the auction house, and it also keeps the prices relatively high. Of course, it'll be dependent on your server. For example, on mine, the prices of Sky Golems have dropped considerably since the release of BFA, albeit along with the price of the WoW token and thus the deflation of gold. Now, although I don't recommend taking mining as your second profession on your alt, having Pandaria mining on any of your characters will greatly decrease the cost needed to craft a Sky Golem. And especially if you have the Pandaria farm, because you can use mining to smelt the ores into bars needed to craft the Golem. And alchemy can be useful as well to transmute the living steel also used for the Golem. Again, all of this is covered in a lot more depth in my Pandaria farm video. Besides the Sky Golem, yet another mount that you can craft is the Geosynchronous World Spinner or Depleted Caparium Rocket. You can only pick one to craft depending on your engineering specialization, but this is another really lucrative mount to craft that is often overlooked and can be simply learned from the trainer once you have high enough of a level of Pandaria Engineering. And yet another Pandaria Engineering craft that I've had a lot of success with is the Mechanical Pandaran Dragonling Pet. And this one is a consistent seller because it has always been a really good pet coveted by pet battlers. And you can simply again learn it from the trainer at a high enough level. And some other notable crafts include the Wrath of the Lich King Mechanical Hog for the Horg or Mech Janir's Chopper for the Alliance, the Blingtron Daily Quest that you can get a little bit of raw gold and sometimes rare items with, and still a lot of other profitable items, which is why engineering is so good. And although I'm not going to be able to cover all of these in this video, I'll certainly come up with a follow-up video for just that. Next, the second profession I believe you should pick up on your alt would be jewel crafting. And this is for the same reason as engineering, that it can also craft some really profitable mounts. That also has a fairly low barrier to entry. And the recipes for these panther mounts can be obtained from getting reputation from the Order of the Cloud Serpents in the Jade Forest in Pandaria. And all you have to do is to complete daily quests until you have enough reputation to purchase the 5 different panther mount recipes. As of Battle for Azeroth, the reputation gains will come very quickly, so it should only take you a few days to collect all of the recipes, on top of being able to collect some cool dragon mounts if that's your thing. And now that we're done covering both professions that I recommend for your alt, I'm just going to quickly run through some honorable mentions for some other timeless crafts that are also really good like the Vile of the Sands from Alchemy, uh, the Alchemy Transmutations, Cosmetic Glyphs from Inscription, and finally, for Legion content, we have the leatherworking legendary items, especially the Sentinel's Eternal Refuge, which grants movement speed, and thus is coveted by farmers. And last but not least, we have the Blacksmithing Steelbound Harness, which is also another mount, which does require quite a bit of setting up. Now, if you have questions regarding any of these crafts, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And lastly, the final tip I have for you is to have a bank alt to have your characters be able to send items to, which could save you a lot of time collecting mail and posting once you begin to manage different types of crafts. And in the case that you accrue a lot of items you have to post and repost, learning how to use the TSM add-on to do post scans can help you save a lot of time as well. But this will only really matter if you have to manage a lot of items. For simple posting and undercutting, you can simply use an add-on called Auctionator to handle your posting while still using the TSM add-on to help you determine what's profitable to craft. And that concludes the longest video I have ever made. What I intended to be a short guide turned out to be greatly lengthened by my rambling, so I apologize for that, but if you somehow enjoyed or found the video helpful, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting that notification bell for more videos on making gold in both BFA and Classic WoW just like this one. Again, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comment section below. 
But all in all, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.